What is up everyone and welcome to something that you have not seen on the channel for a very long time and that is a very very nice example of a bit of retro slash vintage slash old school tech equipment. Now I've been having a lot of requests to show some old school tech because I used to show quite a lot more than I show now and it is something that I want to get back into. And today we are starting things with a bang by showing this absolute beauty of a portable videotape recorder. Now I just want to say it straight away, this is not mine guys and as with lots of the vintage stuff I show on the channel, it's not mine. Some of it is, and most of it isn't. This is my dad's, um, and basically my parents uh, buy and sell antiques, and they often find a bit of retro uh, slash vintage tech equipment, and I can take a look at it on the channel. So if you guys are interested in seeing old turntables and old um, audio slash video stuff, maybe some old hi-fi stuff or whatever, post it down in the comments below. Um, I just want to see if you guys are still interested in it, because I know there was a decent following for that kind of thing a few years ago. But anyway, let's dive in and take a look at this little beauty. This is a Hitachi. The model number is probably in the video description. This is a portable VHS recorder. Here it is guys. I assume, by the way, I've not googled it. This is one thing I like doing. I like just using my own knowledge in these videos. I've not googled this thing. My guess is from the late 70s, but probably the early 80s. One thing you'll see about it first is it is in a portable bag, and this is the classic futuristic space age design bag. This sort of silver puffy Star Trek slash Blake 7 looking bag. It looks absolutely beautiful. This was the bag of the future back then, but of course now it looks incredibly retro. So this is how you would wear your video recorder. And this is from the time where camcorders, maybe you could get camcorders that recorded tapes on board, but when the camcorders first came out, the VHS camcorders, um, they didn't have internal tape decks so you had to carry around an external recorder just to record your footage so it's quite simple guys this bag would go on your shoulders and it's got a nice padded shoulder thing here because this thing does happen to weigh a total ton and uh, you'd put your tape in and of course guys of course of course on the side here you have the convenient flap and this is where your camera plugs into this proprietary multi-pin DIN connector there and you've got your camera and you're filming and you're recording it on your uh, on your VHS recorder which is absolutely badass of course you don't have to use it like this but this was the primary use and if you type in I don't know what you could type into YouTube maybe old VHS camcorder or something like that you will see a few adverts from back in the day where you've got some proper 80s looking people with these on their shoulders carrying around a camcorder this was the ultimate portability solution, which I find really cool. Now, of course, when this is in its case, you can't access the controllers, but I do have something that will make your life a lot easier for that, and that is, hang on a second, the included wired remote control. Okay, so here it is. Absolutely awesome. Uh, with this, you can record you can stop, play, record. You can even do tracking and speed with these little dials down here, which is great. Now, the only thing is, I believe that you would put this cable through the side and route it around the case because this actually plugs in the front, but there is enough clearance for you to do that because it is quite a low profile. Uh, connector. So it does have an included remote and we will talk about how you would power this thing a little bit later But what I'm gonna do is take this thing out of the case to show you guys a closer look Because you can't really see much when it is in the case now Like I said primary use is for a camcorder and my dad bought this from a guy that did used to own the original camera that went with this It's a massive shame that we don't have it, but as you can see included handle of course it's a portable device you can use it outside of the case for whatever reason you'd want to. I guess if you had a little friend following you around, I'm not sure how long the proprietary cable would have been for the camcorder, but um, I guess he could carry it like this and you wouldn't need to use the case. So, here it is, guys. Now, of course, this is a classic top loader design. For those of you who don't know what a top loader is, you basically push the eject button, like so, and the tape goes in here. Now, pretty inconveniently, I don't have a tape. Let me go and grab one. All right, guys, I have here a recorded copy of Doctor Who Series 1. Basically, the tape goes in like this, and you slam it down. And yes, you do have to give it a fair bit of force, but you don't have to totally force it. It's just a nice 
solid clunk when you push it down. You're not damaging the machine in any way. And you eject the tape like so. Now this just, this wasn't just a portable uh, tape recorder thing. A lot of the home VHS machines, in fact all of them to begin with, used this top loader design. And I am fortunate enough to own a couple of machines like that. I have not shown them on the channel yet because they are not working, but uh, my dad and I hope to make one working unit out of a few because I do have a couple that are the same. Um, top loader video players are notoriously unreliable, especially by today's standards. Um, and of course, when I refer to a modern video player, I mean the ones that are front load where you just push them in. Uh, that most of you guys are probably familiar with, but you cannot deny that this top loading design is extremely cool. So the eject button is a mechanical button at the front there. Now, putting the tape to one side, I'm going to lower the camera a bit and we're going to take a little look around the machine itself. So on the front of the unit, this is where you have all of your primary controls. Play, stop, record, fast forward, etc, etc. Taking a look at the front here, we of course have this flip up handle and as well a few connections and buttons on the front like the remote connection. We have the eject button that I showed you. We have the timer clock as well as a battery indicator and a memory button and all sorts of little features on the front there. Turning it to the side, taking a look. This is the sort of main port section if you like, if I bring it closer. This is the proprietary DIN connector for um, the camcorder. This is a 12 volt input that you can power the uh, system with and we'll talk about power later. We have both audio and video in and out, phono, so I assume that's like composite and RCA audio which is absolutely great. And then over here we of course have microphone and earphones so you could totally professionally walk around with this thing with headphones on as well monitoring your sound which is really cool. There are also switches for uh, colour modes here, not not quite sure what that is. And there are, I believe, audio switches somewhere? Was that on the front? I'm not too sure. I think that might be on the other unit, but I don't want to spoil any surprises right now. Um, on the other side, there is nothing. This is a blank side, but when we get to the back, this is the extremely exciting little area. Now, I'm going to ignore this flap for now because that brings me on to a whole other section of the video, but we will take a look at this. Now, if you slide this cover to the side, and it's very, very hard. I don't want to break it. It's very hard to get off, guys. Hang on a sec. I know this is a little out of frame here. There we go. Now, if I just raise the camera up ever so slightly, you'll, you guys will be able to see this. Now, here we have a 12 volt plug, just like on the side, but this time around, if I unplug that, you can see that it's a 12 volt input that is connected to a proprietary, if I can slide this out without hitting my camera, it's very big, proprietary battery. Now, here it is, big and blue. This is a Hitachi battery, as you guys can see, so I assume this is original, which is really cool. No idea how long you would have got out of this in terms of power, but nevertheless, it is still absolutely awesome. I really think it's cool. That slides in there. Um, it actually slides in the other way. Come on, Tom, get it right. There we go. Oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, that's, I think, no, I was right the first time. It is this way. Now, I assume that they don't hold uh, loads and loads of power because if you take a look at the bag, you guys may have been able to notice the side pouch on the side. I do actually have a secondary battery in here. So, you would charge them both up before leaving the house when you wanted to record whatever you wanted to record and maybe you'd get half an hour off of each video recording. I have no idea, but I do know one thing. The proprietary um, camera connection jack would have most probably provided power to the camera itself as well. So this battery would be powering not only the deck, but the camera. Now I am fighting with myself as to which way the battery goes around, but I'm going to come to the conclusion that it doesn't really matter. Now the input, the power input jack is recessed into there, which is pretty cool, so that you can bundle the excess cable over here, and we can hopefully try and replace the flap, which is a little bit awkward to do earlier on. Let's see if we can get that pushed down. There we go. And pushed in like that. Excellent. Now then, we are going to take a little look at that flap that I said that we were ignoring for a second back here, because this is the intriguing part. Underneath here, we have another proprietary connector as well as an RF output. Now, this can only mean one thing. If you were spending hundreds, and I do mean hundreds in the 80s as well for a system like this, the least you could do is be able to play this on your TV at home, right? 
Okay, so you got the RF output, all is well. You can play tapes on your TV. You've even got composite video out on the side and all sorts of audio outputs. But do you really want to be rocking batteries all the time at home? It's not exactly ideal, is it? And also, how do you charge the batteries? Well, let me just get a quick new angle so that I can show you guys the awesome nature of this next announcement. So as if this guy wasn't portable enough, let me guys introduce you to what I like to call the necessary power supply for this system. Here it is. Let me just stick it there. There we have it. Great stuff. Now you guys may be able to see a couple of cables dangling off this. One is a standard wall plug, of course, so it gets juice from the wall. And then the other two is proprietary and RF connection, as in aerial leads, coaxial aerial. So, what is this? Well, this is the power supply for this. Now don't worry, you would not be taking this on the road. There would be no advantage to taking this on the road. It's not a portable unit. You would more than likely leave this at home, connected to your television, and you would take this on the road with you. Now, not only does this provide power for this when you're at home, but it also charges the batteries. If I can remember where the batteries plug in, we may actually be able to show you is it down there? Yes, here we go. The batteries themselves get charged off of this power supply as well. They plug in the front down there. You can only charge one battery at a time, and I'm not sure if you can use this powered up while charging a battery, but I assume you can, because it's a fairly hefty power supply. Now, it's not just a power supply. This unit basically turns this simple VHS recorder into a home video system. Yes, this is primarily a power supply, but it also gives you a television tuner and all of the features that you'd expect on a home VHS player um, to be able to record television and browse your TV channels. So these are all the channels rode up here. If I actually get you a lower angle, these are all of the channels. You've got BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, ITV Two, and a load of spare channels. Under here, you've got all of your, you know, standard obligatory buttons that you'd use for uh, recording and a timer. Here is a display. So this would show you all of your clock and timer information. And under here is the classic flap that you saw on all of these machines to, of course, tune in the channels. Uh, each button corresponds to each tuning dial and you would tune in the channels so that they appeared on here so that you could record your television. Now, on the back of this unit, as you have seen, we have the proprietary output, um, output slash input for the deck in terms of power and whatnot, but we also have the RF. We have the main hardline power switch and we have, of course, the aerial in to get television reception and the aerial out to actually plug the whole thing into your television and uh, be able to record TV and pass the aerial signal through to the television because you'd obviously have your channel set up on here and your television so that you could record a tape on, say, BBC2 and you could watch ITV2 on your TV. Not that we had ITV2 on analog TV in this country, come to think of it. But that is the system as a whole, guys. As you can tell, a pretty damn beast setup. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the camera, so we can't test the filming capabilities. And also, it's kind of hard to record something on this, even though I could just do a composite input. We may fiddle with it in the future, but I know my dad is probably keen to sell this. So what I'm gonna do is take out the battery from in here. I'm gonna hook all of this up on the floor. It'll probably take me about 10 minutes to get power and everything sorted. And then we will just try and play a standard VHS tape on this system to see what it does. I do have an appropriate TV to use as well. For those of you who aren't aware, at the end of my bed, I've got a nice old fat 80s CRT. So this should work and look great. But don't get your hopes up, guys. Loads of these top loaders are unreliable. So let's check this out, see if it works. I'm pretty excited to do so. If you're still with me this far in the video, guys, hope you're enjoying a lovely bit of retro tech. I really do appreciate your viewing of my video content. So apologies about this part of the video guys, it's gonna be um, probably a little bit out of focus here and there, handheld camera work, but whatever. I have the system sitting on the floor here and I've got the TV powered up as you can probably hear the static. Apologies about the mess in my room guys, but I have grabbed a tape. It's always important when you're testing uh, your video player that you're not sure if it works, it could chew tapes instantly. So it's important that you don't pick a tape that's important to you. Thankfully, I have an abundance of tapes that don't really matter to me, along with an abundance of tapes that mean a lot to me. So 
it's not too hard to pick one. Uh, I've got this film here, what's this film called? My Best Friend's Wedding. Um, I think I've seen this film, I vaguely remember it, but the point stands that here is the uh, tape and I don't really care about it. So, the first thing we're gonna do is put the tape in the machine. We'll eject like this, put the tape in as I demonstrated earlier, close her up, and we'll flip the power switch on on the back and the display should light up. I believe it should be like a, um, a liquid crystal kind of alarm clock type display in red, I assume. Here we go. Okay, there is the clock with a nice blue display actually. Man, this was a high quality product in its day. Really high quality product. So let's take a look if it plays. Okay, so, ah, okay, I see. Hold that button down. Ah, there we have it. Ooh, what can I hear up there, guys? <laughs> no way. It's Michael, Jules, it must be uh, months, huh? So, um... I can't wait to talk to you. I'm in Chicago at the... Guys, I can't show too much of films because of copyright, but as you can see, that is working. So do you know what I'm going to do now? Is I'm going to come over here. <laughs> Again, apologies for the mess. I'm going to grab the original... Oh, uh, no, Avalanche. Uh, damn it. Okay, that's okay. That was avoided. The original Lost Boys. Not the uh, 90s remade tape. There we go. And I'm going to stop this. I'm not 100% sure that it's not chewing tapes at the moment, guys, but I'm going to risk it because i got a good feeling about this machine. There is that random film that I tried. Let's grab The Lost Boys because this is my one of my favourite 80s films of all time, as you guys know. Here it is. Boom. Stick that in. Close. Play. And let's see. This tape should be in fairly good condition as well. Let me get comfy on the bed and see if I can uh, point the camera at the screen. Mm, quite a long leader. Yes, now, wow, that was 80s. The Lost Boys, this is a proper cinematic um, certificate. And I think there is uh, spool spots in this film, in this version of the film. Um, next real spot, sorry. So what do I mean by that? I mean that there's two black dots on the screen in the top right-hand corner every time you get to the end of a reel. So I believe this is a seven-reel film. And that was before long play systems in cinemas. It was to allow projectionists to know when the changeovers were coming. So they used to have two projectors physically running, a uh, 20-minute reel on each and they used to do active changeovers. You know, projection was a proper, proper job. I was lucky enough to be able to experience a little bit of that when I first started my job. Even though we had a long play system, we still had two 35 mil machines in place, so we used to do it from time to time just for fun. As you guys can see, original 80s Lost Boys tape, 1987, in very good condition here. Looking very, very good. Lovely picture on this TV, guys. Proper 80s look. And as you can see, this machine is working pretty much flawlessly. I don't want to jinx it, but I would say flawless. Now again, I can't show too much of films, so what I'm going to do is fast forward a little bit. Excellent. Now this machine is fairly advanced for its time. Um, I can tell because of various... Ah, that's interesting. It doesn't do with in-film fast forwards. That's a very common thing for these top loaders. But I would never do that with a tape anyway. It's very bad for your tape to do that. A couple of times of doing that and you'll degrade the quality quite a lot. This is a very slow fast forward and rewind. It took quite a few years for VHS machines to have um, a fast fast forward or rewind. Ah, oh, crap, it looks like I've rewound the damn tape. Ah, oh, no, I haven't, different scene. Guys, I really don't want to get a copyright strike on this video because that would just nail my channel, but 
if you haven't seen The Lost Boys, one of my favorite films of all time. I go on about it in so many, so many videos. Um, yeah, this is actually starting to feel like a retro IMNC video, guys. I'm, I'm loving showing this machine off, actually. This is great stuff. Great, great stuff. Now, as I was talking about rewind and fast forward, it took a long time for VHS to actually get caught up with the speeds of, uh, you know, rewinding and stuff. The latest machines can rewind a tape in sort of 30 seconds, but it wasn't uncommon for a top loader to take at least five minutes to rewind a feature length film. This machine is from the early 90s, I believe 1992. So it's a front load design, but it's still an old school four head design. It does have hi-fi sound, but you can tell this is old school because it's like a two-sided machine, if that makes any sense. Um, this takes a good three minutes to rewind a feature length film. But if you come over here and take a look at this Sony machine, that Sony machine will rewind in 30 seconds because it has high speed rewind, but that machine is from the year 2001, so much newer. But yeah, this is a little beast and it is playing the tape absolutely perfectly. Now I've shown a lot of this song guys, so I don't want to get caught for the song either. Although I do believe that the film has slightly different pitching to, um, to the soundtrack or the original track, the Lost Boys soundtrack. Um, because it's not due to the machine. The machine sounds as if it's playing at correct speed and I am 99% sure that it is. It is the machine in general. I have the DVD version and the Blu-ray version and I'd say that the, all the tracks within the film are about a semitone higher than the entire soundtrack and this is quite common for film soundtracks. Um, the tape is playing extraordinarily well on this on this machine which is great as you can see. No thanks. Well Audio is perfect as well. Um, I would like to actually give this a whirl through my hi-fi. Let's see if we can do that. Well guys, what do you know? The machine routes audio through the headphone output, even in playback, which is awesome. So it comes out. I'm going into my amplifier back here. Now this is a stereo cable, but if you have to take a look on the amp, if I turn it up a little bit, I'm so sorry about the camera work. You can see it's coming through mono, um, and this is because this is a mono machine. Now that's fine. All VHS tapes have the capability of playing in mono because of the drastic amount of mono machines that were flooding the market. Stereo and hi-fi wasn't a thing for VHS for ages, and even then it was in the really high-end machines. It took, it was at least until the mid 90s where they were on pretty much all machines, you know, stereo output. So if you wanted to get stereo sound out of either this headphone jack or maybe more appropriately the phono output, then all you'd have to do is get this cable, but you just have to get a uh, phono splitter. So you'd put both of the, um, you'd basically have one phono going to two phonos on the input on your stereo, and then you'd have a mono signal at least coming out of both speakers. Or lots of amplifiers have a mono sum button, so you can press that and it will route the left channel to both left and right output. But as you can hopefully hear, the audio is really damn good. You can also get a stacked phono cable, which is like those phonos that have a phono female on the back. That would also work. Um, but of course, sometimes with a mono headphone output, it'll still have the two pole connection where it'll send a mono signal to both if it's a newer piece of tech. But this one only has single and that would be just for monitoring. So uh, even old school mono headphones, you might have two actual headphone cups, but they're both receiving the same signal. They're not stereo headphones. Um, but most had just a single pole connector. So yeah, that is that. Um, alternatively, I guess you could take one signal out from the headphone output and one signal out from the phono output and then just route them both into the same input on your amplifier but then you may run into slight issues with uh, the impedance of the outputs. They would probably end up being different levels but you could probably sort that out with your balance control. But I know I'm going on a little bit now guys. But yes, excellent stuff. What I will do is wait until the film gets into a great place with audio and then see if we'll crank the amp up a little bit. I know I've only got one uh, speaker on the go. I don't think I can route to both speakers with this amp, can I? Hang on a sec. Pretty cool place. No. Are you guys sniffing on newsprint or something? No, I can't, but that's okay. That's okay. 
yeah, this is cool. So I'm gonna fast forward to a bit with cool music and then resume the video. Couldn't have found a better scene. Let's crank it and hope I don't get a strike. Absolutely awesome. If anyone's curious, we're currently coming out of that speaker. These are Technics SB3030 speakers with the inverted dust caps. They are very nice three-way floor standing speakers. Classic 80s muddy sound, but in a really clean way. And just with a little bit of extra presence in the high end, they sound really, really nice. And only you guys that appreciate the 70s and 80 audio gear will, will know what I'm on about by that muddy sound, that muddy nice sound. Not muddy, but warm sound, it's great. <laughs> Now this would be way better coming out of both speakers, but this is still great. Anyway guys, I officially cannot show any more than that right now because I will definitely, definitely get a strike and I just cannot risk that on the channel at the moment. So it is time to stop it and I am gonna rewind this tape. Massive, massive thank you for you guys to, uh, massive thanks to you guys for watching this. It's been absolutely awesome showing you this. Um, this has put me in a really good mood, actually. I'm so glad this machine works. I was fully prepped for it not working because of the amount of bad luck that we've had with top loaders in the past. It's great to see that the display works, the system works, audio output, everything is absolutely great. So I have a massive respect for this system. And when my dad sells it, I will be sad to see it go. Um, I did phone him when I was in the cut of this video finding a scene for the film and uh, he was very glad that it's working, so absolutely great. And for those of you, again, who don't know, this film is The Lost Boys, the film that I was showing, um, one of my favourite films of all time, in my top five, maybe even my top three favourite films of all time. So, that is that. You can see how quickly that was rewound now. Not bad at all. Actually, this, this is quite a speedy rewind. Um, so, yeah. I am really pleased with this. Time to power it down. Again, huge thanks for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments if you want to see any more retro tech stuff and then I can cover the stuff that comes in. Um, if not, then no problem at all, but I thoroughly enjoyed recording this video and I hope some of you guys enjoyed it too. So again, thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't enjoy it very much. Please leave a comment down below. I'll answer your questions if you have any. Again, not an expert on this type of stuff, but still really, really enjoy playing around with it. Cheers guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video.